You're listening to the Nature's Image Farm Podcast. I'm your host, Greg Burns, and we're talking bees, homesteading, and the old-time ways. This episode is brought to you by EnduraHive Wax-Dipped Equipment. No paint, no rot, no hassle. EnduraHive. Built to endure. Now, on to the show. We're here day two, uh, the Bee Expo. We've got uh, uh, the world famous Mike Berry hiding behind the cameras here. We've got uh, <laughs> Bruce's Bees Castle Hives, and we've got special guest Dr. Cameron Jack joining us here, hey. the Stream Team booth. That, Mike's good, isn't oh, that? Oh, my good? biggest fan. Wow. Oh, man. I've never had a fan before. <laughs> you know, it's fun when we do the Stream Team Wednesday nights. We get to have folks like you on and learn a little bit more about you and what you're doing for the bee community. But it's really cool to be here in person yeah. and uh, kind of uh, make that relationship even tighter. So thanks for spending a little bit of time with us here at the Stream Team booth. Yeah, no problem. I, I was just thinking about it this morning was that the last time that I was with you guys on the Stream Team, like... I can't remember when, but it was like in it was like forty minutes into the like meeting, but then my mic cut off. Yeah. And I wasn't able so I've been harboring all these things that I've wanted to say and now I can finally <laughs> let it No, I'm just kidding. I just remember I felt really bad about that. Was, yeah. It's never happened to me before or since. It's not you, was, it's me. Yes. It's okay. not you, it's me. Okay. That's what so I was it's, trying it's, to say. There That's the things. feelings I was harboring. <laughs> right. this is, it's your fault. So a lot of us are, are paying close attention to what you're doing pertaining to oxalic acid. We're, we're, uh, what's the latest and greatest? Where are you at with your studies right now? So we did just get something published. It's something I'm going to be talking about at this conference. Actually, later today, um, I, I have a, a talk that I'm giving, but I'm going to be talking about specifically um, some work that we have done that's more related to the application method. So we compared... Uh, we compared dribble, vapor, and fogging, which I, I don't know about where you guys are. Like, all of you are in different locations, and but people ask me about fogging all the time. And right. so if you've ever seen those big insect foggers, they just, it produces a cloud that's, like, unbelievable. So you think, like, man, it's got to be doing something. <laughs> right. uh, we actually didn't see it effective at all. And it's not yeah. actually putting in nearly as much uh, oh, out as much OA as you would think. Wow. Now I got to make sure that everybody's on the same page is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like a vapor, which does create like a cloud, right? But that's just you heating up a straight bit of oxalic acid. So it's oxalic acid that's, you know, getting pushed into the hive. A fogger is like you're mixing it with ethanol, and 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 then it creates a big cloud. But you're not actually getting in nearly as much as you might think right. you are. So, anyways. We saw that dribble worked. We saw that OA at four grams worked a little bit better. Um, and then we like tested different intervals. So like different, because that's another question that we are always getting is like, well, how often do I need to do this? Right? Hey guys, Greg Burns here at Nature's Image Farm. Are you going to the Bee Expo 2025 in Louisville, Kentucky? We are, we're excited. Can't wait to see you there. Hey, are you interested in the best wax dip boxes on the market? Be sure to check out our booth at the expo, but look out for our pre-sale deals at naturesimagefarm.com. No paint, no rot, no hassle, endure a hive. Built to endure. See you there. Hi, I'm Greg Burns, founder of Nature's Image Farm and Endure a Hive wax dipped equipment. Hey, as large family beekeepers, we saw a major need to do way better in protecting our investment with our beekeeping equipment from the elements for the long haul. So I coupled our practical beekeeping experience with our wood science background to create the EnduraHive wax dip line of beekeeping equipment. Our unique wax dip process expels water from the wood, replaces and impregnates it with our proprietary blend of micro crystalline wax offering superior weather protection without the mess or expense of paint. Our equipment is protected from the weather inside and out, preventing box rot, fungal growth, and decomposition. That's a huge savings in both time and money. No more reworking tired, worn out boxes year after year. Our wax dipped equipment is proudly made in the USA. So protect your investment 
with EnduraHive wax dipped equipment. No paint, no rot, no hassle. EnduraHive, built to endure. Because that's another question that we're always getting is like, well, how often do I need to do this? And the label is like super vague about it. So we wanted to explore that a little bit more. And so we had it, we applied every three days, every five days and every seven days. And we did that for three weeks, basically, based on our, our I guess, four, four applications. And um, what we saw was there was actually a, a pretty significant difference when you do it every three days, it, you're actually killing fewer mites than if you wait five to seven days. And it's kind of intuitive. Mm, I mean, you wow. might, if you think about it, like the mites actually need some time to come out sure, and yeah. like keep emerging out. And so if you're treating them too fast, you're not letting like the mites really emerge out. Mm. So anyways, we saw that about five to seven days was kind of that sweet spot where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Um, and, and we, we, you know, this is, one of those things is like, I don't work for any oxalic acid company. Like nobody gives me <laughs> right. any money for saying any of these things. Yeah. It's just that I, I, we've seen that we can really clean up hives. Like we, we had some colonies that had really high mite loads um, that were around like the averaging around seven eighths, like too high, like way wow. too high, right? Percent. Per, uh, yeah, percent mites, wow. right? Like, but we were able to clean them up after four applications when we wow. waited every five, five days, That's amazing. right? Like, so, it, it, uh, I know it can work, but that's the problem with oxalic acid is like it, you do have to apply it multiple times, but, um, you know, with new devices, I think it's getting faster and it's getting easier and it's not, not as time consuming of a commitment that it used to be. So, so I think it's, it is becoming a more practical solution for that, I think you're right. It seems like um, OA has been kind of an underutilized tool in the toolbox for various reasons. A lot of it was uh, the, the equipment used to uh, actually get the vapor and the correct amount in there, the ease of use. And I think with uh, a lot of products on the market now that do a really good job of making that really easy. Bruce, how important is osalic acid uh, in your toolbox as far as the tools that you use uh, for your integrated pest management? I use it quite a bit. I've, I've kind of tried to use it more in recent times since I've used other products this time of the year in the winter time. So a question I have for you, Cameron, um, you mentioned that it, if you apply it multiple times, it helps. Are you talking with brood in the colony? Yes, now, that's Now you're in great. Florida, so obviously you have some brood in the colony. We have but... some brood year round, but we've, we've actually, this is a different, different story. So don't let me get distracted too far now, but but there's a group of us, um, actually it's, it's starting to grow across the United States. It started in Auburn actually, um, with Jeff Williams was made this big push. It was like, Hey, let's, let's do this collective brood monitoring test where we are all measuring our brood throughout the winter. And we start in like October and we measure brood every two weeks and we go until like February and we kind of just see how our brood shifts. And we've got people in Ohio, we've got people in Oregon, we've got people in uh, like up in the Northeast. And then uh, most of us are in the South, Southeast. And, um, and it's been really interesting to see how everybody's like brood areas are kind of growing and shrinking. We have some nice maps. And so off the top of my head, I, I obviously can't tell you, but it's, if you go into like the university of Auburn's website and look, or university of Auburn honeybee lab, like you find some links to see these maps. So I'm just telling you all of that just to say, We've been monitoring our brood pretty closely and we do get, we will, where we're at in North Central um, Florida, we will significantly reduce our, our brood areas. But even still, I mean, we're going to keep like a grapefruit sized mm. uh, patch of brood kind of even in our coldest parts of our winter. And then it comes back pretty quick. Wow. Once, once we get into mid January is when the ma maple turns on and then bam, the bees start growing real quick. And, but we will, we will shrink it, shrink it down. So when we did that experiment, when we were doing the intervals, we were doing that in um, December when our brood is certainly shrunk, but we've got to like one or about one frame of brood at that time. So, so reduced brood, but we've seen that like even during um, the springtime was when I was talking about our, 
the part of the experiment where we were testing different application methods was during the spring when we are full of brood, right? And we still were reducing uh, mites. You just have to apply it. Mold. Uh, for us, and I, I think this is true. I mean, the, I think the original kind of concept of OA and OA vapor, like that was really touted, especially in Europe um, uh, years ago, they would say, oh, they would they would cage the queen, they would get the brood out completely, and they would just one fell swoop, you knock down all these mites. I just, I've never seen that, right? Mm. Even when our colonies are, are, even when we forced a brood break, you know, we still don't really see a really good cleanup in one fell swoop. We have to hit it multiple mm. times okay. to really bring the mite loads down. But again, That's, I believe we can bring those mite loads down. Um, it just takes... It just takes multiple yeah, applications. I think, I think that's real promising, though, that you say you can do that with the brood because all you hear about is don't treat when you got brood. So, but And the other thing I've heard is you need to treat more frequently, so you've kind of talked about that as well. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I usually go once a week for three to four weeks is kind of what I've done in the past. And um, so that's typical what I've done. I usually do it this time of the year because the brood is at its lowest. But yeah, And I do. I'll hit them some in the, like, if I just need to, Hit them sort of different times of the year. I will just to kind of knock back the I give what they call the phoretic mites, but sure. but uh, it's it's been a good tool for me. I've had good success with it. I think I need to do more of the measuring before and after, um, but I and I've done I've started doing more of that. But but I do know one thing I did a couple of years ago. I had some apple maize in my backyard that got neglected throughout the year pretty much. I was out in my out yards doing everything, and in my backyard I wasn't. So I'm like, I'm just going to hit him with oxalic acid vapor. It was in about late November through December. And I had, you know, the apomates have a tray in the bottom so you can see what drops. And I hit them. Uh, I hit all the colonies. One of them in particular I was watching really closely. And it dropped probably thousands of mites the yeah. first time. Just the whole bottom board's covered. The second week, same thing, very similar. And then it started decreasing. And I think I hit them five times. And by the end, there were almost no mites. And so yeah. that to me showed... I didn't do the alcohol or the the wash on the on the mites, the Dawn dishwashing wash, but I did see the huge huge difference in the drop, and yeah. so I do believe it's effective. And that was a strong colony, even in the wintertime. I had brood in there, I'm sure, um, but but that kind of helped me understand that yes, it will work, but you do have to be consistent. And one or two treatments doesn't do the job. Right, you've got to do it three to four weeks, at, I think, at minimum to yeah. get them knocked out. Yeah. That's a lot of work. But with the new new tools we yeah, have, with those it's a new lot tools, faster. I mean, battery pack, just throw it on, bam, bam, bam. You can do it so much faster. The other thing yeah. is I use, uh, as, number, as far as grams go, I've been using four grams for almost everything. Nukes, I'll drop it down to two. But for anything, a single or double deep, I've been just hitting them four grams. And triple deep, I'll hit them twice for four grams. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so that's kind of what I've been doing. Brian, how effective or what? Uh, talk to us about the uh, OA as a, in your arsenal. How important is OA for yeah. you with your bees? Um, it's huge. And what Cameron said about the five-day interval, that more or less validates my IPM that I have set up because I'll typically, when I treat with OA, it's I go about it's every about five or six days and I'll hit them about five times. And the reasoning is, well, yeah, I'm hitting those phoretic mites, but like you said, they need to have time to crawl out. So I want to cover an entire brood cycle. That way, as they're emerging out, I can kill those. Right. So it's just, it's having the tools now that we have in beekeeping has made efficiency wise, you know, like you said, you slap a battery on, let it heat up, and I can go through my entire yard. I have 13 colonies now. It's 20 minutes, I'm done. Yeah. And that's amazing. Where years back, you know, I'm lugging a cord out and right. doing this and that. And, it, and it's just, it was a little bit more time consuming. But as technology is evolving, it's really helping out beekeepers. Um, and, and it's just, it's such a great tool. I've seen, as far as health of my colonies, you know, using oxalic acid as one of the tools has greatly helped out. Yeah. The the beautiful thing, too, I think, is just at least if we all can knock on wood. There's no mite resistance yet, like right. to oxalic acid, where, where, where we really struggle that with that with a lot of other of our chemical treatments that are even more expensive, right? And part of the reason that I think there's no resistance is that what oxalic acid breaks down so quickly in the high, like with, um, 
I have not done this research, but I've, I've talked with other researchers that have, have shown that within 24 hours, like they can't really detect it anymore. It's a, it's a chemical that just is water soluble. uh, At least where we're at in Florida, right? It's, it's just so wet. There's so much water in the air that it just, it breaks down quick and, and it doesn't really give a lot of time for those remaining mites, surviving mites to kind of any build any kind of resistance to it. Right. Um, and so, so it, that's why I think it, it can be really good as a good tool, but I'd still remind everybody too, is like, you know, we don't want resistance to it. We want to keep, so I, even though a lot of my research has focused on oxalic acid, I don't ever tell anybody just use oxalic acid. It's the only thing you'll ever need for the rest of your, your beekeeping life, right? right? You really should have a few things that are in your arsenal that you're, right. that you're doing, but, but this can be one of them if, if used effectively. And I'm, you know, there's a group of us that are trying really hard to to get the registration changed to get the um, legality of the higher dose. The higher dose, yeah. yeah because because I mean, we we feel like there's a lot of evidence now to support that it's Absolutely. it's safe at that higher right. level. Sure and is. I'm sure there is actually a higher threshold that will be a point where we will say this is too much. Don't do this, right? 15 but, grams for two yeah, frames of bees? Yeah, uh, that's ask me how I know. Too much. Ask me how I know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no one's going to do that on purpose. Yes, and so, so it's, it's uh, but 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 it, it's a good tool right now, and, and people should kind of use it as part of their arsenal. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Dr. Cameron, Jack, thanks for spending some time with us here yeah. at the Stream Team booth. We've all, we love the collaborations in the past. It's great to have you here. Uh, in person and so uh, I know a lot of folks are looking forward to uh, uh, hearing your presentation here at the uh, North American Honey Bee Expo here in 2024 so thanks again for what you do for the bee community and thanks for uh, your friendship and collaboration here with the stream team. All right, appreciate it. Thanks for having me guys. Thank you.